Hello and welcome to VaporTech. Today we're doing a high temperature nucleophilic aromatic substitution using our high temperature reactor. So the high temperature reactor is available in Hastelloy and stainless steel. This is a stainless steel version and it has a variety of features that are important for its operation. On the inlet line you have a check valve and this is very important because it prevents any solvent boiling and traveling backwards out of the reactor. Secondly, at the end of the reactor, we have a one meter long stainless steel cooling coil, or Hastelloy if you're having a Hastelloy reactor. And this is very important for making sure that the fluid inside the reactor has a time to cool before it reaches the back pressure regulator. It's very important that there is pressure on the high temperature reactor because otherwise the solvent will boil and could deposit reagent materials inside the reactor. Both the stainless steel and Hastelloy high temperature reactors are able to go to 250 degrees on positions two and position four of the R4 of the R series. Like all of the VaporTech reactors, pull this small tab down and slide the reactor into place. The thermocouple attaches into the top port and is just gently screwed in. Now that the reactor's on the system, I can connect up the tubing and it's very important that the inlet line goes through this check valve. My outlet line connects to the outlet of the back pressure regulator. For this experiment, I'm using a 250 psi back pressure regulator because I'm going to be running at 250 degrees and I don't want my solvent to boil. Now that the reactor's on the system and all the tubing's connected, I can load my reagents. Now the reagents are in place, I need to prime the reagent pumps. So the last thing to do before we start is fill the backwash of the pumps. To do that, I use some clean solvent, which I inject into these inlet ports on the top of the pump. I do it for both pumps, and it's good practice to use the solvent that the reagent on that pump is dissolved in. So now that the system's ready, I can program Flow Commander to run the experiment. To do that, I open a new experiment. I have the opportunity to fill in some information about the experiment here. I tell the system what configuration of reactors I'm using. So I told it that I have two pumps with bottled reagents, and I've told it what the concentration of those reagents are what extra tubing I have, and what reactor I'm using. The rest of the tubing I have to find elsewhere. On this screen, I get to set up some other parameters, like the maximum pressure that the system's allowed to reach, whether or not I'm using any auxiliary equipment, and how I want the system to be controlled, either volumetric ratios, stoichiometric ratios, and residence time. On this screen, I get to define the actual reaction parameters. So what molar ratios of my reagents I want, what temperature I want the reaction to be, and how much reagent I want to use. I can use the dispersion model to help me decide this because this will tell me how much of my reagent is actually at steady state in the reactor. This shaded region identifies that I have some reagent at steady state and all of this reagent is diluted by the solvent before and after. So I'm going to increase the scale that I'm working at. Now the shaded region shows me that I have a much larger amount of reagent at steady state. And this is gonna be better for my reaction. And finally, I can decide how my product is collected. Now that the reactor's at pressure, I can start the experiment without risk of the solvent boiling. So the experiment is finished. Flow Commander has taken the RCUs through its automated cleaning and it's collected the product for me. 